Greetings ideas aficionados, I'm Chevalier and this is a quick look into the diplomatic ideas and what are the best situations that you should take those ideas. As you can see, we're starting as Castile because, well, explorations are, exploration ideas are one of the primary ideas that you can take. But let's actually start with a forewarning. Usually your first ideas should be diplomatic mainly because diplomatic tech is not that important and you can stack up on those points. At the same time, you're rarely gonna use points in the first 30 years to annex to, to basically core stuff with diplo points. So again, you should have a surplus of diplo points. So most likely, unless you're doing some uh, some cheeky strategy with uh, first military tech, we are going for the dose vol from religious or from uh, adaptabil adaptability from admin ideas usually you'll go for a diplomatic idea. Now, let's uh, go over each of the diplomatic ideas then see what are the best ideas that you can take and what are some of the most uh, useless ones. Now, let's start at the top with espionage ideas. We have the efficient spies that give you spy reconstruction and advisor cost. We have the agent training plus one. We have the provincial trade power and foreign spy detection. We have the subject liberty desire minus 10. We have the cost to fabricate claims minus 25 and the bargain efficiency and privateer efficiency plus 30% plus 25 and plus 30% and we have the yearly corruption minus 0.10. With that max we have rebel support efficiency plus 50%. Now those ideas overall are decent but they cannot be placed. Honestly the spider network construction and the advisor cost are gonna be useful, but not that useful. Advisor cost is gonna be decent, but usually you won't want it that much. They simply cannot be placed. Espionage ideas, or though they got revamped, they still cannot be placed. In some PvP scenarios, yes, they can be placed. They're gonna be really useful. The diplomat is gonna be really useful for claims. The support from here, the rebel, uh, rebel support efficiency is gonna be good as well. The embargo efficiency, privateer efficiency is going to be good as well, but that is mainly in PvP games. Uh, same goes for li uh, liberty desire of subjects. Again, experience ideas are mostly for PvP. Uh, even with the revamp, it's not that recommended that you take them. Uh, they are kind of a hybrid, but uh, as I said, mostly uh, used against uh, destroying powerful nations. Uh, that are really stable and usually that means uh, player ruled nations. That is espionage ideas. Now let's go to diplomatic ideas. You have the plus one diplomats, the diplomatic relations, the cost reduction or exhaustion, the improved, re improved relations plus 25, the diplo rep plus 2, the province war, war cost cost or war score cost, uh, the diplo tech cost and at max we have lower impact on stability from diplomatic actions. Now, usually uh, before the introduction of influence ideas, the diplomatic ideas were, and the revamping or trade, if I'm not mistaken, or the revamping or the trade mechanics, diplomatic ideas were the first ideas that you would take. Uh, they would have uh, given you a bit more stats, they would have given you uh, claim reduction time, which would have been good as well, uh, and some other stuff, if I'm not mistaken. But now they are kind of useless, uh, simply because if you are a kingdom you have the plus one diplomat, which you, now the diplomat here is kind of useless, you really need four diplomats. Uh, diplomatic relations can be taken from influence as well, cost of reduction or exhaustion is not that important, improved relations again not that important, uh, if I'm not mistaken these are good only on the up and not on the low from the or is it? I honestly am not sure, but let's say that it gives you, let's actually go back and let's say that they actually give you the bonus on the on the reduction, for example the increase in the modifier to, re to aggressive expansion basically, so you uh, decrease the aggressive expansion modifier at a faster rate it's decent, but again, you have the influence here uh, although you can get faster relations, it's honestly not that important to be honest, it's not that great. The diplomatic reputation plus two, 
you get it from here as well and you have the brother score cost, cost a war score cost it's again decent but not that uh, influential in your campaign the diplotech cost again is good uh, in the early game but as I said before diplotech is not that important so I would not say that it's quite important uh, We'll see that it is quite useless, to be honest, at the, at the same par with uh, the war score cost. And we have the lower impact on stability from diplomatic actions. Uh, this means that if you break your royal marriage, you're not going to lose the stability there. And some other stuff from declaring war when you have a truce, etc. You're going to get the lower impact from those. Uh, which can be beneficial, although, again, for European nation, it can be done if you are the Papal Controller, you have the same stuff from here, if you actually do some of those stuff. Um, and again, they are not that great as they were before. I mean, they are better ideas. If I would class them on a, let's say, on a, on a scale, I'll say that they come uh, fourth, I would say. Yeah, fourth. Yeah, about fourth with the... Uh, We'll talk about the, the standing uh, when you finish all of them. Now let's go for trade ideas. Now you have the global trade power plus 20%, the merchant plus 1, the trade range, the trade efficiency, the merchants, the trade steering, the caravan power and the merchants. Now trade ideas are highly situational. I really do not recommend taking trade ideas if you don't have an end trade node or if you have somewhere where um, a huge amount of uh, trade power can come great. For example, let's actually go for the TI. Let's go for the trade map. You are in the Genoa trade node. Uh, global trade power is really good. Again, you're gonna push a lot more stuff, you're gonna have more control in the Genoa trade node. Uh, the merchants, again, are gonna help you steal more trade. The trade, uh, the Trade range as well is gonna help you. The trade efficiency is gonna give you more cash. The extra merchant the same, still more trade. Uh, trade steering again, still more trade. And you have caravan power for the inland nations. Uh, and at max you have the merchants plus one. These ideas, I will say, they're situational. They're mainly used as a third idea for uh, land nations, landlocked nations, for example. Let's say uh, Russia. For example, perhaps uh, Russia, uh, let's say Portia, some of this, of the guys here, usually landlocked nations. They are used as a third idea for landlocked nations because uh, they're not going to be that important. Other than this, again, end trade nodes and landlocked nations that cannot explore or, uh, yeah, they can't can explore because you're going to go for influence and trade. But yeah. This is it on trade ideas. Extremely situational and uh, only useful if you don't have the right amount of cash. Usually for guys that are, that are exploring, you have the merchant from expansion ideas, so they, you, you only need trade ideas. Now, let's go for exploration ideas. Pretty much the, again, situational. I mean, exploration ideas are mainly used as a first or a trade idea uh, or a third idea as a first if you are uh, nations that can actually colonize from the start so basically if you are um, castile as now portugal uh, aragon perhaps uh, england uh, france uh, some other nations that can actually colonize from the start of the game if they are uh, basically good enough to pull it off as for their ideas, they are quite simply only focused on exploration. Uh, you can see it from the name. You have the colonists plus one. You have the ex uh, the allows recruitment of explorers and conquistadors, so you can basically actually uh, colonize, col no, col not colonize, explore. So you can actually see the new world. You have the colonial range plus 50%, which is going to increase your colonial range. You have the global settle increase plus 20. You have the global tariffs. Global tariffs are the the amount of cash that uh, uh, the colonies, the you know, other colonies, the yes, actually not uh, the colonies pay to you. 
basically the, the guys here, for example, the colony of Brazil or whatever you want to call it, the 13 colonies here historically, the colony, the colony of Mexico, etc., Canada, again, those colonies there. Uh, and you have the colonies plus one, you have the naval force limit modifier. Uh, this, I sometimes I say, is not that great, but actually, it's quite good when you actually want to explore. Uh, it's not just for you only need that many sh attack ships but you're gonna need transport ships and you're gonna need to ferry troops from one place to another so the neighbor force wind modifier is gonna be good actually quite good with the max you can have the cb i guess the primitives <coughs> sorry uh, so primitives i mean this case here basically the guys in the new world the natives here the natives here here mainly on the north and south america continents the primitives there uh, that is it. Mainly they are used as a first or a third idea, depending on if you if you can get to the new world. For example, I am um, I don't know Austria. Although as Austria, you can pull it off as the as the first idea if you are cheeky enough. So this can be done as well, like that. Although influence can be better. Oh no, influence cannot be better. Influence 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 ideas would uh, give you bonus imperial authority in previous patches so they will be good to take as a first idea in the HRE and right now they're out at the great in HRE they're quite uh, standard but yeah exploration ideas are taken as a first or a third uh, first if you want to go first for exploration 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 so that you have access to, to basically this uh, and here where you can get access, for example, just grab the Ottomans and take over f Spain and get this island here and this island here, etc. Or uh, pass Austria the same way, or nations I can actually explore. I know I'm ranting about it, but exploration ideas are one of the best ideas. I would say they are tied for first place. Now, maritime ideas, they are not that great to be honest. I rarely use them. I haven't used them actually once. Uh, the sea is not my specialty. Usually I just mess ships. They are not they are done that important to be honest. Usually if you are a small nation you don't want to spend uh, cash on your ships uh, because uh, you want to build only trade ships to get more cash, sorry, and you don't want to build on galaxies on something like that. And they are not that imp they are important. Usually, if you are a small nation and you are fighting a bigger nation, you should just stay out of the the sea battles, mainly because you don't want to waste cash on ships that you're still gonna lose. Now, for maritime ideas, you have the early navy tradition, the national uh, national sailor modifier, the global repair ship, the naval force limit modifier the ship cost, the naval leader maneuver, the blockade efficiency, and at max we have the ships can repair when in coastal sea air zones, uh, coastal sea zones. This overall, I mean, they're especially, especially made for sea, for the sea. They are the same as naval ideas. They're mainly used to give you more force limit and some other uh, cheeky stuff like rep uh, repair when in coastal sea zones. So basically you can actually siege stuff or you can actually not siege when you can actually uh, for example I'll take uh, I have uh, I'm sieging Labourd and they have ships in Labourd and they are keeping ships in Labourd. So uh, and I took damage here and I don't want to send my ships back to the mainland in England for example so they can be repaired so they can be actually in the can be repaired in a coastal province which is quite good again some cheeky stuff this mainly are for PvP reasons uh, if you do want to dominate over uh, let's say you're playing as um, France let's say France although you might not want to get maritime ideas first as France but Let's say that you want to dominate England, you might want to get the maritime ideas. With the increase for naval force limit, you're gonna get more uh, more carex. You have the sailors, you have the naval tradition that's gonna keep you up. The land leader maneuver, land leader maneuver is also good. The blockade efficiency is decent as well. Ship cost, again, same stuff. But they're mostly used if you want to dominate somebody who has an advantage over the sea. 
uh, or if you are disadvantaged uh, over uh, a guy who has a bigger navy. For example, a Burgundy versus England or France versus England. And usually used in PvP, mainly because, uh, when you have to dominate, uh, uh, for example, the England. I mean, England, Tunis, the Ottomans, uh, Castile, mainly powers that have a huge amount of, uh, of ships. And that is it with maritime ideas. I'll consider them being the second to last, if I want to say it right now. And the last and the second idea tied for first place is the influence, idea, uh, influence ideas. Now, for influence ideas, you have income from vassals, you have the yearly prestige and the chance of the new air, you have the depolarization cost, the aggressive expansion impact, the diplomatic reputation, the diplomatic relations plus one, and the vessel force living contributions with uh, unjustified demands minus 50%. Although those these ideas are not that great, for example, the income for vessel is not that great. Uh, the early precision chests of new air are basically useless. The deep organization cost, although is one of the best ideas in the whole game, together with the grass expansion impact minus 20%. The deep reputation is going to help you with taxation. The diplomatic relation and envoy travel time is going to be good. Only the diplomatic relations are going to be decent. They're going to allow you to have more vessels. And the envoy travel time is convenient, to say the least, but just convenient. Now, for the vessel force limit contributions plus 100% are quite decent, especially if you're going for a vessel feeding and unjustified events. Now, influence ideas can be said to be taken only for landlocked nations as a first idea. The hordes do very well with influence ideas, mainly because they have a CB. And they can take lands and vessel, vessel feed the, uh, and vessel feed stuff, and they just they integrate them. They're also good for Austria because they have the the modifier from uh, from ideas. They have the actually it's not here you can see it. If I actually go to tech hasp, uh, tech hab not hasp, tech Austria, and we see here they have the the platinum station cost minus fifty percent. With uh, that uh, 25, it will go to 40%, which is going to be something like, uh, I don't know, uh, 4, 8, uh, 32, you're going to be left off with something around uh, 5 points, 4.8 point, uh, uh, Diplo points per development. Something of this, uh, this magnitude, which is going to be really good for you. Uh, other than this, to be honest, the, the aggressive expansion is also good here, the diplomatic reputation. Overall, they're a package for uh, uh, landlocked countries that want to expand uh, really fast. Usually it can be used for, uh, for smaller, smaller nations as well, for example, to actually uh, save your mana points so you can have better tech mana points, so you can save your, uh, actually, yeah, their mana points. To save your mana points so you can actually uh, take more tech or get more development if you want to, depending on how you want to do it. Again, more mana points, uh, by mana points I mean these points here, if you didn't know about it, they're usually called mana points by more experienced players because they are just as like mana, like just like mana, they're just simply mana points, um, what I say. They're simply used to get the... Uh, uh, for landlocked nations to get uh, more efficiency on points, more efficiency on points. Now, for the let's say uh, top five, uh, top what, top six, let's only six. I would say that influence and explorations are both situational. If you don't want to explore, you'll go for influence. If you want to explore, you'll go for exploration. So basically, it depends on your location. So that's why they are tied for first. Second come uh, third, no second, third are uh, trade ideas, followed by diplomatic ideas, uh, followed by I would say tied for seven is espionage and maritime, uh, maritime ideas, mainly because they can be used for PvP or the uh, or situationally, but uh, these are more for PvP and these are more situational. Overall, I'll go about them again and see and tell you what are they used for. 
espionage ideas, PvP wise, uh, diplomatic ideas, not that great. Influence idea are better. So mainly as let's say uh, a fifth idea, a sixth idea, late in the game perhaps. Although they're gonna be quite useless in the late game. Trade ideas useful if you need cash or you are in the net trade node as a third idea. Uh, as a third or perhaps a fourth idea, depending on how you want to go for it. Or if you want to expand in this year as year, you can take it as a fourth idea, but usually you want to go for a great idea as your fourth. Exploration ideas, highly situational, only for uh, ex expansion into the new world. What the fuck is going on? Only for expansion into the new world, because that's the the menus for exploration ideas. Maritime ideas, highly situational against the uh, uh, player, so basically against PvP, or you want to be nations like England, or I don't know, uh, the Ottomans have uh, better galleys, or Tunis, I think Tunis has better galleys as well, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, express ideas, tied for the first, same as exploration. Uh, you should be the first idea that you want to take, mainly because it's going to allow you to vassal feed and get more stuff. Now, for the policies, I would say that the influence ideas uh, click very well with admin ideas because you get the vassal uh, integration act, which is going to give you a deep annexation cost minus 20%, which is quite good. So they click well together. Other than this, Explorations, exploration ideas go well, expansion ideas, duh. So you can get the extra colonists and the merchants, so you can actually uh, move trade from whatever you want. Other than this, influence ideas go well f with religious ideas. So if I would say something, it will be like this. For landlocked nations, you'll go influence, uh, religious, for the CB, for the Dozeful CB, then uh, save your points for admin ideas. Then you topple them off, either with exploration or trade, or with a military idea. Usually, you might want you you might want to go for a trade idea if you have if you are big enough. If you are not big enough, go for a military idea so you can have more more uh, a better war machine. There we go. Better way uh, better way to say it. As for the exploration ideas combination, be exploration, expansion, religious. Then followed by either a trade idea or a military idea. It's up to you how you want to pull it off. Although military ideas are decently better because you're going to have control over the trade with uh, with this guy here, with this merchant. So you're not going to need another three merchants. So military idea is better. That's why I say the trade ideas are only situational. And this is it. Other options would be diplomatic first, if you don't want to, uh, for example, if you are, uh, let's say, Moscow, I would say, mainly because you have the, module for the minus 20% as Moscow for the according cost, that would be good as well. Same goes for the Ottomans, uh, if you want to go first, but usually for the Ottomans, it's recommended to go for admin, for the core, core creation cost minus 25, then perhaps go for a diplomatic idea, that will be good, yeah. So it will be admin, diplomatic, uh, then uh, religious, perhaps, uh, religious, uh, humanist idea, sorry, not religious. Again, there are plenty of combinations that you can pull it off, although there are some standard stuff that uh, go really well in hand. The, combina this, the more situational combinations are only for nations that uh, have a certain play, uh, play style. As I said, the Ottomans, the Moscovy, uh, uh, the Irish also can go for a first military idea. There are some cheeky strategies that you can you can talk about, and you can actually check them out in the initial situations that I make to see the actual combinations for the nations. Okay, so this is it. There's nothing much to say. Uh, next up will be admin ideas. Then uh, I'll go for uh, for full ideas and I talk about the the full diplomat the full uh, idea tree. So and uh, what are the best combinations that you can take depending on uh, what kind of nation you are and your size, etc. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy this and uh, I'll see you next time. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe or like the video so it will, or even comment, to be honest. It will really help me out. Uh, but yeah, I bid you farewell, and I'll see you next time, guys. Ciao.